Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was, had been baptized, just as he was coming up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. A grace, peace, and mercy be multiplied to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Today we celebrate baptism of our Lord's Sunday, the day that we remember Jesus uh, coming to the Jordan River, baptized by John the Baptist, and seeing that beautiful vision of the heavens opening up, the Spirit lighting on him like a dove, and the voice of God speaking, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Some ask the question, why does Jesus need to be baptized in the first place if he's without sin? And uh, baptism is a, a sign, a way that we receive that gift of, of forgiveness. Well, and some say that maybe he was uh, connecting with us in that uh, celebration that happened. But I think more so is that identity. That the word that is spoken is powerful. This is my son. You are my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. In the waters of baptism, that gift is given to us, and it's a gift that lasts forever. God connects with us, promises to be with us, offers us that identity as God's beloved, and that stays with us forever. The image that comes to mind for me when I think of that is that reminder that it continues on from baptism through life and even into death and beyond. Several years ago, I was at my previous congregation, St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Westerville, Ohio. The back of the congregation, the back of the sanctuary, was this window, Jesus the Good Shepherd window. It was just after Christmas, and we gathered at the church for a funeral for a longtime servant saint of the church, Ron Severance. It was time to prepare for his funeral, and as we were going through the preparations, we knew that we would have the service at the church, and then we would continue on down the road to the church's cemetery. But we were having a December and January, kind of like what we had yesterday, a lot of rain. So we went down to the cemetery to check it out the day before, and it was just a, com a complete mud pit. We knew that there was no way that we would be able to get the casket into the cemetery, let alone everybody else who was going to be in the funeral procession. So what we decided to do that day is that we would do the service inside the sanctuary. We would roll the casket to the back of the church, stop below the Good Shepherd window, and do the commendation that we often do at the cemetery there at the back of the church. So we gathered that day for the service. And as the service went on, you could hear the wind howling outside and the old stained glass windows would whistle when the wind got too strong. You could hear the wind whistling through there and the rain pounding on the roof. We decided we had made a good decision to stay inside instead of going outside. At the end of the service, we rolled the casket to the back of the church. We took off the funeral pall, remembering that we are baptized children of God, placed on the, the spray of flowers. And we continued as we do at the cemetery below that window, I said the words that I often say at the graveside, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we commend your servant Ron, and we commend him to your eternal care, and place his body in the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face shine on him and be gracious to him. Just as I said those words, light shine upon him and be gracious to him, the clouds parted, the sun hit the good shepherd window and shone down on the casket. There were gasps in the congregation. 
I went on. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face shine on him and be gracious to him. The Lord look upon him with favor and give him peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Rest eternal, grant him, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon him. And just then the sun shone even brighter onto the casket. Afterwards, people asked, how did I do that? <laughs> I said, I'm in sales, not management. I don't know how that happened. It just happened that way. But they asked if they could have that done at their funeral too. They thought that would be nice. But for me, what it was is this. There is an identity, an identity that happened for Ron decades before, an identity that said at the baptismal font, you are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And as we gathered for his funeral, that same promise held true to that very next day, that, ne that day that we celebrated that day. We celebrate Jesus' baptism. And notice as he comes up out of the water, the word of God speaks. You are my beloved, with you I am well pleased. And notice, Jesus has done nothing in his ministry, yet, and yet God says, with you I am well pleased. And God says the same thing to you and to me. Because you see, at baptism, it's God is the one who acts, not you and me. Often what happens is we show up in our parents' arms. We didn't do anything to get there. We just showed up. And God does the rest. In that beautiful le lesson that uh, Tanya read from the book of Acts, it's the same one that you'll hear on Easter Sunday. It's a beautiful passage that Peter is sharing with the household of Cornelius, who's a Gentile, outside of the realm of the Jewish faith. And Peter is offering to him the gifts of God that are for all. It was difficult for Peter to understand this because uh, up to that point, people were thinking, first, if you wanted to be a Christian, you first had to become a Jew and then became a Christian. But what Peter had was these visions, visions of a, of a huge blanket, like a, a picnic blanket coming down from the sky with opening up in front of him. And on it were all kinds of foods that were considered unclean in the Jewish faith. And God said, arise, get up and eat. Peter said, I can't, these are unclean. And God says, what God says is good, is good. Remember that the disciples were told that they were going to be witnesses not just to the people in Jerusalem, but Judea and Samaria and all the world. So this message, the message of God's forgiveness, the message that God offers, the message, the gift of baptism is given for all. And so Peter is able to share that with the household, that this gift is for them as well. It's a gift for you and me as well. How many of you remember, um, know when you were baptized? Do any of you remember the date by any chance? Okay. So sometimes it's good to go back and look at those things. You know, every now and then, uh, uh, two things. Uh, I have people who come to me and they say, you know, Pastor, when I was baptized when I was just a baby. I don't remember. I'd really like to get rebaptized. And I try to remind them that in the Nicene Creed we say, we believe in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We are only baptized once, okay? It's okay to remember your baptism, to be reminded of that. But I, say, I tell people it's, it's this, is that, is that when we baptize, God is the one who is baptizing. And if we're going to baptize again, what we're saying is that God didn't do it right the first time. I don't think God makes mistakes. As somebody once said, the word oops is not in God's vocabulary. Okay, So we remember that baptism. It's okay to be reminded of that, and we'll do that later in the service to, to have that opportunity. In fact, when we went to Israel, there's a place that you can go down to the Jordan River, and um, they can give you downs, and you can be baptized in the river there. I tried to remind my people that, yes, you can go in and remember your baptism, but you know what? It's, it's, the baptism that happened in Ohio works just as well as the one that happens in Israel. I had a... Uh, a colleague who uh, shared at a Bible study, he said he was baptized in Kansas. And he said, if I understand meteorology right, the water that was in the Jordan River when Jesus was baptized, some of that evaporated, it moved and then dropped. It evaporated, moved and dropped. He said, I'm sure that some of the water Jesus was baptized in Israel 2,000 years ago ended up in Kansas 2,000 years later, right? So that same water is there. It's, it's about that promise that God gives us through baptism. But I have also had other people come to me and said, Pastor, 
I'm not sure if I've been baptized or not. I don't have family members to remember. I don't have records of that. I'm not sure. And that's when I say, let's gather around the font and do it again. Because God understands and grace abounds and we can make that happen. So if, if the, you need that reassurance, if you're not sure, we'll talk. Be happy to be able to do that for you. And if you have children that haven't been baptized yet and you want that to happen, any time that we can do a baptism is a good day. So let us know. We will celebrate with you and welcome you to the font to know that you are welcomed there. It's about our identity. Identity that God says to you and to me, you are my beloved. With you I am well pleased. Several years ago at a small church, they gathered for worship one Sunday. A young mother came to the church, her infant son in her arms. Dad was nowhere to be found. Parents lived far away, but she really wanted her child to be baptized. And so as they gathered at the font for baptism that day, the pastor invited this young mother up with her infant son. An elderly woman in the congregation noticed that she was standing up there all alone. And she wanted her to know that she was not alone. So she worked her way to the baptismal font and stood next to the young mother. A gentleman in the congregation noticed that that was a, a church council member who had come up, and he was on church council too, and was thinking that maybe that's what church council members were supposed to do. So he worked his way to the baptismal font as well. And there were some elbows flying in the congregation saying, aren't you supposed to be up there too? Said, oh, I guess I wasn't paying attention at that congregation meeting. Right? So they went back to the font and stood with them, and all of a sudden there were all these people, until everyone in the congregation was standing around the baptismal font to celebrate that baptism. Isn't that the way every baptism should be? God says to you and to me, you are my beloved. And there are days when we find that hard to believe. And as Luther would say every time he struggled, but I am baptized. Remember that you are baptized children of God. Remember that you are beloved. And if you divide that word in half, it can simply say, be loved. Beloved children of God, know you are forgiven. Know you are loved. Amen.